Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the black and white panel that's found in the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2018. I've mentioned in numerous videos that you do not have to do these panels in any specific order. You could do them whatever way is most natural for you in your workflow. But I do recommend that you do tone and color first. So on this image, it was a beautiful fall day and it is a raw image. I did some tone and color adjustments. And you can see I really didn't do a lot to the image. It was pretty much a very colorful, beautiful scene to begin with. I also mentioned in previous videos that you should do luminance noise reduction early in your workflow because it's easier to get rid of the noise in a raw image early before you start doing a lot of processing to the image. Once you do a lot of processing to an image, it's more difficult to rid it of noise. So I did do some luminance noise reduction. And that's the only thing outside of lens corrections that I did to the image. So now I'm ready to add the black and white panel. So I'm just going to click on where it says show more and I'm going to add the black and white panel. And you can see as soon as I added the panel, it applied it to the image. So we now have a black and white image. And there's a lot of different parts to this panel. We'll start out at the top and you can see that there's some circles, green, yellow, red infrared. What those are, it's going to simulate as though you really shot film and had that specific color filter on your lens. For example, if you shot black and white film and had a green filter on your lens, once you develop the film, you should get an image that looks something like this. Similarly, if you had a yellow filter on your lens, you would get something that looks like this, red and then infrared. So they're really quite handy. When I used to shoot film and I shot a lot of black and white film back in the day, I used to prefer having a yellow filter on my lens. It used to darken the sky nicely and bring out any trees or grasses. It would make them brighter. So it gave me a nice contrast between the sky and the land. That's why I preferred a yellow filter. So you could get that same simulation by just clicking on any of these simulation filters. Now to the right is a drop down and there's some more choices there. Now I found my computer lags quite a bit as I hover over these. I'm not sure if that's unique to my computer, but if you find that just be aware that you might have to hover over there, leave your cursor over them a little longer for it to kick in. And you can see this is an auto large grain simulation as though you were shooting some very fast film and it had a lot of grain to it. Below that is auto small grain and that will kick in. You can see that. Below that is a blue filter which isn't um, included in the um, with the other green, red, yellow and infrared filters. And you can see that makes the sky real bright, but it brings the trees and grass and stuff like that very, very, uh, you know, darker. So I never really cared personally for blue filters. Now below that are the green, infrared, red, and yellow filters, which we already uh, tried out over here. Now, right here is a little dropper, and I'm going to get to that in a minute because that is more specific to what these sliders do. And we're going to talk about these sliders. When you convert an image to black and white, you could do what is called a black and white mix. And what that means is you're going to change the luminance values of specific colors that were in the color image. For example, we know the sky was blue. We have a blue slider. If I move this slider to the right, it's going to make any blue that was in the color image brighter. If I move this blue slider to the left, it's going to make any blue that was in the image darker. So I could come in here and I could darken my sky a little bit by moving this blue slider to the left. So it's making any blue a little darker. Now it doesn't just 
it's not capable of just discerning sky as opposed to a blue kayak if a blue kayak was in here it would darken or lighten that blue kayak as well so it's any blue that is in the image so i would take that down then maybe i'd come in here and i'd bring yellow up it brings kind of some of those um, trees makes them a little brighter there so it gives me kind of a little more contrast in the scene and it's a nice look so you could come in here and do that now what you might want to do is get what they call an auto balance by just clicking this auto button right there and on one will give you an auto balance of these sliders uh, to give you kind of a balance shot now personally I don't care for that so I'm going to turn that off now I mentioned that there's a little eyedropper here that's called a targeted adjustment if I click on that and I hover over the image you can see that the cursor turned into a plus sign that's allowing you to target a specific color now we know in this color image that there was a blue sky so I'm going to click on the blue sky with the left mouse button and hold that mouse button in and you can see that the uh, cursor now turned into this horizontal double arrow that's encouraging you to drag your cur or drag your mouse left or right so if I drag it left while holding in the left mouse button you'll see the sky is getting darker and you can see that as I do this as I move it left or right the blue slider over there on the black and white panel is moving as I move so it's allowing you to target a specific part of your image now you can uh, stack these so I'm gonna click it again and I'm gonna click on where I think there's some yellow in the image right here and click down and I want to make that brighter so I'm gonna go to the right and you could see that the yellow slider moved to the right so I actually could target specific parts of the image with that eyedropper and you can stack the eyedropper unfortunately you cannot stack the filters so you cannot put a yellow filter on top of an infrared filter or anything like that the filters are one at a time but you can come in here again with this eyedropper and specifically target a part of your image now if you have a mix a black and white mix that you like and you think that that is kind of your signature black and white mix that you will like to apply to every image you could make a preset for it now on one calls it a style go down to this dropper or drop down right here and you can see save new style and we're going to click that and I'm going to um, my uh, B&W mix so that is my black and white mix now when I ever I open up this panel I want to apply a black and white mix to my image I could go to this drop down and go down to right at the top my B and W mix and click on that and it automatically moved the sliders to where I had them now below that is film grain this is just a simulation of grain as though you shot a uh, film and it gives you in this drop down specific types of film now one thing I want to make note of right away when it says none if you come in here and move these sliders around nothing happens so this these sliders aren't active until you actually pick a specific film grain so you could come down and again you could hover over these and it will uh, give you a preview of what that grain looks like not sure if you could see it on the video but it's applying grain as though in this case it's an Ilford Delta 100 film Ilford Delta 400 film and you could see the faster the film the more grainy the images once you pick one of these you may pick Ilford Delta 3200 and you think wow that's just a little bit too much I want a little less then you could come in with these sliders and you could move them around you could see how now it really affects the grain the amount is just how much grain is going to be there then the individual granules how big do you want those if you move it to the right you'll make them very large and if you move them to the left you'll make them considerably smaller so you could come in again and just pick a grain there's a number to choose from Kodak T Max 3200 and so on you could come in here and again you could just hover over these and it will preview that grain.
for you on the image. On this image, I do not want any grain. So that is the black and white panel. It's a relatively simple panel, even though it does quite a bit to your image. I just like to thank everyone who watches my videos. I know I say this at the end of every video, and I don't want it to come out that it's just a robot saying it. I really do appreciate everyone. And when my son was ill, so many of you emailed me and messaged me with your support, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I'll talk to you guys soon.